Welcome to the ministry of Triumph in Christ, a ministry to the body of Christ, to the believers of Christ. I had a dream the other day. I saw the map of different nations. Some nations have more light and some nations have less light. There are different levels of lights for each nation. Then I saw some of the nations with lesser light began to cast darkness on the nations with more light. This was what I saw. The nations with lesser light seemed to cover up the other nations that have more light with some kind of cards in the shape of those nations that block these nations from emanating light. I woke up from the dream and I asked the Lord, what does this dream mean? The Lord says, keep looking to me who is your light. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed by the great multitude that comes against you. The battle is not yours, but the battle is mine. Be established in me, position yourself in me, and you shall see your victory. So whether as a nation or as a people, or whether as an individual, whatever that the enemy is coming against you, whatever the enemy tries to throw at you, the Lord has these words of assurance for you. Keep looking to him who is your light. Indeed, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Fear not. As long as you keep looking to the Lord, as long as you keep walking with the Lord. 2 Chronicles 20 verse 6, And Jehoshaphat said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Now the background here is Jehoshaphat and all of Judah, they were looking to God for help at a time when a great multitude was coming against them. And the Lord then gave them this assurance, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15. Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. The Lord then said further, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle, position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Now the word salvation here is Yeshua. It can also mean victory, deliverance, aid, help, welfare, health, healing, prosperity. So you see, this word is a very broad word, Yeshua. So whatever you may be faced with at the moment, position yourself, Stand still and see the Yeshua of the Lord, the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will know how to deliver you, aid you, rescue you, heal you, and give you the victory. Amen. Let's continue with 2 Chronicles 20. So the next day they arose early in the morning, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood up and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. I say it one more time. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Now, this is exactly what the Lord is saying to you right now. Believe, and you shall be established. The words be established here can mean be strengthened, be strong, be assured, be firmed, or be affirmed be built up, be supported. And you know what? What came after? If you read further in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 21 to 30, it was an amazing victory for God's people. Praise the Lord. Maybe you have been discouraged by all this hurling and throwing by the enemy against you. Maybe you have been discouraged by all this buffeting by the enemy against you and your heads cannot be lifted up. Your hands are down. But today the Lord is saying to you, He is supporting you. He is helping you. He has come to your aid. He is the lifter of your head, and He is the lifter of your hand. So by faith, you can lift up your hand and praise the Lord and exalt Him and extol Him because He is your victory. Let's go back now to the word stand in 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17. I read here, you will not need to fight in this battle. 
position yourselves, stand still and see the salvation, the Yeshua of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. What does this word stand mean here? To understand this word stand better, let's go to Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12 in cross-reference. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, what? To stand against the wiles of the devil. Wiles simply mean wicked schemings or wicked schemes of the devil. I continue, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Paul wrote here that we do not wrestle, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but rather it is the battle in the spiritual realm. Of course, the spiritual forces of darkness may use humans to advance their agenda. So let's get back to the word stand here. See the word stand here? It is histomy in Greek, which interestingly means be established. So the Apostle Paul was actually saying, put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? You may be established against the wiles of the devil, against the wicked schemes of the devil. So I read back here Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, that you may be able to be established against the wiles or wicked schemes of the devil. So we can use the word stand and be established interchangeably here. So right now, the Lord is releasing His anointing upon you, that you are now anointed, established, empowered and enabled by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Now the big question here is how to be strong in the Lord? No, not by fighting the battle yourself or with your own strength, not by forcing yourself to be strong, but as a believer under the new covenant by putting on the whole armor of God. Now the expression to put on here is enduo in Greek, which means and deal with, clothe with, be filled with, fill your thoughts with, or be conscious of. So the Lord wants you to wear the armor of God, to be endued with the armor of God, to be clothed with the armor of God, to be filled, so to speak, with the armor of God, to fill your thoughts, so to speak, with the armor of God, to be conscious of the armor of God. So what is this armor of God? You can see that in Ephesians 6, verse 13 to 18. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. See the word stand there? And Paul wrote further, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. See that? You will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Let's continue. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, who is this armor of God here? His name is Jesus. The whole armor of God here also speaks of the wholeness, completeness, and the fullness of God. In other words, you become strong in the Lord by putting on the whole armor of God. That is, by filling your thoughts with or be conscious of who Jesus is in your life. So who is your whole armor? Your whole armor is Jesus. Of course, apart from putting on the whole armor of God, Paul also wrote, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, praying in the Spirit, because praying in the Spirit is praying the perfect will of God. Praying God's will be done. Praying in the way that God wants you to pray and declare. Some of you, you may be asking, you mean Jesus is my whole armor? Exactly. So this whole armor is not just talking about the equipments, the items that you have seen here, the belt, the breastplate, the shoe, the shield, the helmet, the sword. It is also not just talking about the characters like the truth, the righteousness, the good news, peace, faith, salvation, and of course the Word of God. 
In other words, the belt, the breastplate, the shoe, the shield, the helmet, and the sword, these are all pictures representing the person of Jesus Christ living in you. You see, it's not a question of what you do or what is the whole armor here, what are the items here, but knowing who you have and who is your whole armor. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is your righteousness. Jesus is the good news. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the beginner and the completer of your faith. Yes, he is the author and the finisher of your faith. He is your Yeshua. He is your salvation. And of course, he is the Word of God. In short, he is your whole armor. Do you see that? Now, just an illustration here. Imagine yourself now in a bulletproof armored car or in a military tank, armored vehicle carrying guns. And imagine it is a state-of-the-art one. It is a powerful one. And you know that nothing that the enemy shoot or hit can come against you. And you feel safe in it. As a matter of fact, this whole armored car is stronger than you are. Where are you? You are inside the whole armored car. That's why you are safe. And this whole armored car is stronger than you are. By yourself, you may be vulnerable to the works of the enemy and attack of the enemy. But when the whole armored car is over you, it is this whole armored car that is going to protect you and defend you. So it is the same with you who are being clothed with the whole armor of God. To be in the whole armor, therefore, means to be in Christ. This is what the Lord wants you to see at the moment. Now, the truth remains that the power of the darkness, the power of the enemy, can never withstand our Lord and His Word. He is stronger. In fact, He is stronger than all the forces of the enemy in the spiritual realm put together. He is stronger than any man's plan or conspiracy on earth. Yes, He is stronger than all your challenges and problems, and that includes even your health. So look to Him who is your light. Look to Him who is your whole armor, and you shall see yourself walking in the victory of the Lord. And that's what it means by the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Your part is continue to look to Him and continue to put on this whole armor. You see, He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. In Jehoshaphat's time, in Apostle Paul's time, and now in your time, and even forevermore. Know that victory is yours. He has already won it for you on the cross when He died for you on the cross some 2,000 years ago. Believing you shall be established. That's what the Lord has spoken in Jehoshaphat's days at that time. And this is what the Lord is saying to you as well right now, whatever challenge that you may be facing. Believing and you shall be established. So people of God, fear not if the enemy is trying to cause you to think that you are defeated. The Lord has another idea. The Lord is stronger. The Lord knows how to turn things around. The Lord knows how to overturn the power of the enemy. Take heart. Keep looking to the Lord. Keep receiving the anointing of the Lord. The anointing of the Lord has been released right now. Receive this by faith. You are now anointed, established, empowered, and enabled by the Holy Spirit. You do not need to fear. You do not need to be dismayed. For the Lord is with you. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will overcome for you. And this is His inheritance for you, even on earth right now. Receive this. Amen. O oh Lord God, you are stronger than any force of darkness on earth, or even all the forces of darkness in the spiritual realm put together. You are stronger than any man's plan or conspiracy. You are stronger than all our challenges and problems on earth. We believe and we shall be established. We stand, therefore, and we put on the whole armor of God that we have learned just now. Just as in the days of Jehoshaphat, and just as the Apostle Paul had written in Ephesians 6, we too shall see our salvation, Yeshua, and we too shall see our victory. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is what the Lord has spoken for me to release to you for this time. Whatever your situation may be, I just want to be faithful to release what the Lord wants me to release. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Have 
a victorious day.